Welcome to Electron Line. The next step is a step you only need to do once. It's come up with the initial process covariance matrix. So what we realize is that in the process, we're going to have some errors in the calculation of the position and the velocity. Let's assume that the process errors in the process covariance matrix are represented by, by a difference of 20 meters in the position and 5 meters per second in the velocity. So what does a process covariance matrix look like? Well, the process covariance matrix from the previous step, which in this case is going to be the initial step, is going to be equal to a matrix like this. And again, it's a two by two matrix because we're doing a two dimensional example. We're across the diagonal. We have the error in the position squared and the error in the velocity squared. And then the cross terms right here are simply the products of the error in the position and the error in the velocity. So now when we plug the numbers in, it will look as follows. This is equal to the position squared will be 400 and the velocity squared will be 25. And then we multiply the 20 times 5, we get 100 as the cross terms. Now what often happens, especially when you want to simplify that, and quite often we don't need to cross terms, if there's no specific relationship between the change or the uncertainty or the error in the position and the error in the velocity, we could set these terms equal to zero, and we often do that when we do things such as tracking airplanes or tracking satellites. So we can go ahead and make those zeros. Ultimately, we can then say that the previous process covariance matrix now becomes equal to just the, the terms along the diagonal, which is the position squared on this term, or this element right here, and the velocity squared on this element, and we could put zeros there, and that would be sufficient for us to do our first example. There are cases where you may want to use the cross terms, and we'll do some examples there as well in the future. But for now, let's make it simple. Let's call this our process covariance matrix using the initial pos position and velocity errors in the process.